Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Wittall. I'm an automation and robotic systems engineer at NASA Kennedy Space Center. And so I'm not fitting in. This isn't a mission concept, but this is something to help mission concepts. Uh, so when we get it uh, all screened out. So um, uh, Brian Day talked about uh, the Moon Trek and space solar system Trek software. And we're working on integrating some of the uh, aspects and tools of solar system treks into model-based systems engineering approaches in order to enable a lot of some of the more uh, arcane aspects of planetary science, uh, enable um, uh, spacecraft engineers to access that and, and work it into their model to help better their design. Uh, and this, of course, works with instrument design as well. So uh, the interest of this work is to retrieve all available information at a specific location or region on the lunar surface, determine its relevance to your mission, uh, and uh, determine the impact to the mission. So in, in this case, we've used Magic Draw software. Um, I'll talk about Magic Draw uh, in the next slide. Uh, but the case study that we looked at was lunar dust, high velocity lunar dust specifically. Uh, we have divided the, uh, the assets of interest into uh, assets and events on the lunar surface. So your assets would be something like the uh, lunar gateway, maybe the Apollo 11 heritage site, uh, a rover or a base on the surface, maybe something in low lunar orbit such as LunaNet, and an event uh, was categorized into either impacts or landings, both of which are known to generate high velocity injecta in L Cross's case up to five kilometers per second. And so part of this was generalizing these methods mathematically in order to uh, determine the impact to different assets uh, on the lunar surface. So as I'm sure many of you know, uh, high velocity lunar dust is something that is very concerning. Uh, we, uh, at Swampworks and Kennedy Space Center, we've done a lot of work with dust mitigation technologies and strategies. Uh, but one of the things that we haven't really explored too much is, is the adhesion and ablation characteristics of high velocity dust. So in the past few years, I've been spending a lot of time studying this and seeing how long it stays in orbit because five kilometers per second is, as you know, well below, uh, above escape velocity. Um, so some of this tends to stay in orbit for up to 10 years, a very, very small amount of it. Um, so the uh, goals of this project were threefold. One, to make planetary science data available and accessible to engineers, uh, to increase the fidelity of the model for natural and induced environments, such as impacts and landings, and to apply real world scenarios to better uh, inform the Artemis campaign. Uh, I won't go too into depth about the mathematical modeling of this, but this is kind of a representation. Uh, really, it comes down to uh, fiddling with Kep Keplerian dynamics to try and better understand where the dust is going to go and how it's going to impact your asset. So we started with an event on the surface, that red dot uh, at the top of the moon. I mean, you can just flip it around and imagine it's the South Pole or anywhere on the surface. And you have an asset in orbit, something uh, that's the blue dot over there. It could be also on the surface. The physics apply the same. It's just that your minimum velocity is the exact speed that follows the curve of the, uh, of the moon. For landing events, the uh, theta one angle is between one and three degrees. Uh, this is based on assumptions from the Apollo data, uh, but for impacts, it's zero to 45. Uh, there are some assumptions going into this. Moon is spherical, event is binary in nature, either it's a landing or an impact. You have two different constraints. Space is black, boring, empty, no solar radiation pressure, things like that. This is kind of what the model looks like, um, where we have an overhead lunar dust risk analysis. This is the blanket program where we look at how the, uh, uh, the risk is calculated for any given event or condition. Sometimes your asset is there for one year. Sometimes it's only have a short mission. Sometimes it's there for as long as 15 years, the entire on risk program in the case of, uh, of Gateway. And we're able to consider both of these. The model in the bottom right, uh, that's uh, the full model that we're looking at now. So on the top left, you have at your assets, like I said, something on the surface is something, some item of interest. Uh, and then we have events and we've integrated multiplicity. So we can look at multiple events over the course of the entire Artemis program, such as figuring out how many, uh, what, what's the impact, the, uh, the physical impact of dust on your asset over the course of many landings in the Artemis program or off nominal situations, such as a Chang'e landing that wasn't planned, maybe an impact uh, uh, either planned or unplanned. So then we flow this through our physical model, which is there in the middle in blue, and out to our output, where we put them in separate bins and, and uh, determine the energies of these impacts. Uh, I mentioned multiplicity. This is what that looks like. So we can stockpile a whole bunch of events or a whole bunch of assets and repeat these situations for different locations across the lunar surface. 
and figuring out how much dust from one event is going to impact everything. Now, initially, our assumptions for the lunar surface was that it was all the same. So you have a certain amount of dust that's going to get kicked out based on two parameters, the mu and nu parameter based on Hausen and Holes Apple's model, which is the illustration you saw several slides ago. Um, those mu and nu parameters are experimentally derived, and we don't have very good information for the lunar surface as it is. So part of the benefit of using systems engineering and MBSE is that when that model changes, when it becomes more informed and we have more accurate mu and new values, or we have a more accurate mathematical model, all you have to do is plug it in and your entire system is better informed, your risk uh, calculations are updated and uh, your impact to your mission or to your instrument is better understood. This is what those kind of simulations look like. So previously, this is from the, the last paper we published um, in the uh, International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety. We looked at things like the Apollo 11 lunar, uh, lunar module, excuse me, the Gateway, a low lunar orbiter satellite, and the South Pole base. and looked at total impact energy over the course of various time scales. So in the first two cases, you have the entire Artemis program, 15 years, a low lunar orbit satellite, which was say only placed there five years after the Artemis program was started, and a South Pole base. So we don't get that run up and running until later in the Artemis program. But as you can see, the total and mean impact is calculated. And then we determine things like off nominal situations. I mentioned like a Chang'e landing um, or an upper stage impact. We had one of those on the moon recently. And you can see some of the results, the, the quantities in the bottom right and how it impacts various assets to the left. In the case of a lunar base, uh, you can have uh, an impact 100 kilometers away uh, from a logistics module. And it's, it's very significant. So I mentioned Moontrek and what we wanted to do with Moontrek, and that's to better inform those new and new values, which is our, our short-term goal, and eventually make this, this software, this modeling method, available uh, to Moontrek as a native tool. So you can determine your area of interest and withdraw the, uh, the information you desire based on the physical models uh, that some of us planetary scientists get really involved in. So we gener generate a query of planetary data. We format it, send it out to Moontrack. Moontrack sends us back the information. We perform a statistical analysis, which I'll talk about in the next slide, uh, get our mu and new values out of that, put that back in a magic draw and get our total impact um, for a given mission. This is kind of what it looks like. Now we're still working on the Moontrack integration. So we generated simulated data sets. What you're looking in these two spiky plots here on the, the, the top right and bottom left is albedo measurements on the Y axis and uh, uh, data points on the uh, X and, uh, sorry, data points in the X and Y and albedo on the Z axis. Uh, I say data points because you select one spot of interest in the middle and you determine how far away you wanna get from that. Depending on the resolution of your data set, that could be 10 data points, could be a thousand data points, depending on the resolution. Uh, you have things like craters, which are the, the pitfalls down there, craters and shadowing. And then in the peaks, you have things that are, have very high albedo, albedo, shiny surfaces, assets on the surface, whatever. And on the top right example, you have a, uh, you selected your point of interest in the middle. And it turns out, uh, turns out that looking over the entire surface, doing a statistical analysis, it's a very representative data set. It matches within uh, that one sigma variance. However, in the bottom left case, you've selected by coincidence, something in the shadowed regions. And by looking at the entire region and integrating over that surface, you determine this is not a very good representation. Uh, and then the model automatically corrects for that and saying, well, this is what the, the true, true value is. We look at the mean instead of that peak value. Now the, the gradient on here is showing from this going from a darker uh, mare region all the way to like a highland area. So I've applied a kind of a gradient uh, to show that even if it's not uniform, it can still do this. Uh, so to summarize future work, um, we want to apply this to very different cases. So Martian train, Titan's lakes, uh, Enceladus' tiger stripes are, are of a special interest to cryovolcanic activity and modeling the uh, impacts on spacecraft as they, tr they try to gather some of the information, maybe pick up a sample from some of that uh, cryovolcanic volcanic plume, uh, make the uh, tool native to solar system treks, so available in all bodies. And of course, uh, we want to include the, improve the fidelity of dust modeling for our specific case to better understand the impact gateway over its lifetime. And that's it.